So, garden barrel. Don planted this on Sunday. Today is Thursday. It's four days. What else did you plant in here? Kale? And kale, and then the very top of some squash. So not all of them have sprouted, but a few of them have already sprouted in four days. And the top is squash, but nothing's come up here yet. So here we are experimenting. Um, never done this before, so there's the first hole. That bottle is three and a half inches in diameter, not the shallow part there, but the thick part there, from there to there is three and a half inches. So we drill, we cut a four inch hole, a slot with a circular saw, and just set the blade depth so that the cut was about four inches. And you can see how it kind of, we couldn't get the whole bottle in, and right there along that edge right there is um, kind of a, I don't know what exactly happened. There's something happened there, though. And it almost broke through. So we're going to make this cut four and a half inches. We're experimenting on this top part because this is we're going to cut this out anyway and throw it away. And then we'll know how big to make our measurements down here as far as our blade cut depth and then um, how far to space them out. So we've got to figure that out using this bottle for about this size hole. So about three and a half inches in diameter is going to be good. So we've got this uh, hot. It's hot enough? Yeah. Okay. And it'll stay hot for a little bit, so I'm gonna reach here and grab underneath this. This hook. Come around this side. And let me get this out now. Okay. We're still not quite using up the hole. Oh, it's going in. Good deal. Okay. So we'll let that dry. We've got a few bottles here, and it's nice to have a few bottles that we can cut one, put a bottle in, just let it dry, go to your next one, um, let it dry. So if, did it go in pretty easy? Yeah. Okay. Do you think four and a half inches is too big? Do you mind if that no, that's fine. sticks out there? Okay. We'll let this one dry and just look at it and um, see how this goes. You can see from working it though, um, when this was flexing against itself, it started to crack there. And that's what happened here because we were flexing this so much, trying to get a bottle in a smaller hole. Okay, so this will be the experimental part. Like I said, we'll go ahead and cut this out um, after we get uh, decide on how we're gonna, um, what sizes of cuts we need and also and actually, we may just leave it on for strength for what we do the sides so that it's not flexing a whole bunch. So I think we'll cut out the top last, and we'll go ahead and make our cuts in the sides, make our pockets, and then we'll cut out the top. Yep, that's what we'll do. So our cut width was four and a half inches. Just for ease, we um, the circumference of this is 75 inches. So we made a mark every five inches just for ease. What Don suggested was we take this rope, wrap it around, um, all the way around. Uh, first, we marked every five inches on that rope, on that string. And so then we just wrapped it around and marked out every five inches all the way around, okay? Then we tried to do that on the bottom. Our marks got off a lot. So what we did was we just eyeballed it from here. We snapped a chalk line from here down, um, made sure it looked straight, and then um, marked... Five inches from right here. We mark five inches down, 10, 15, 20, 25. And that'll give these roots some space down here. Up here, the first pocket will be right here. And that'll give whatever you plant in top some space for roots as well. Okay, so that'll be five pockets high. Then we'll go ahead and cut here. And then we'll cut here. And then we'll come back to this one and cut here. And then we'll come back to this one and cut here. And then we'll come back to this one and cut here. Four and a half. Okay, good. Okay, so... First cut. Sort of in the middle-ish. 
and it's four and a half inches. And um, what you have to keep in mind is when we made our test cut up here on this flat surface, and then now this is a curved surface, when we set the saw blade on here, um, the flat guide on the bottom or whatever it slides on, um, you have to make sure you rock it one direction or rock it the other direction uh, to make sure you get the full length of the cut. Okay, so we're going to do a test here and just go ahead and heat this and go ahead and put a bottle in it. Just make sure we're happy. And then if, that, if we're happy with the way it turns out, then we'll go ahead and proceed with the rest of those size cuts. Okay, so what we learned was you don't want to do too many too close together. We did three really close together and everything really warped because the metal, the metal, the plastic was so hot around the ones we just did. So what we learned to do was um, do one here, do one down there, do one around the corner, do like four or five around, and then just let it cool for 10 or 15 minutes and settle down and let the heat dissipate out of the plastic. And then we don't get as much deformation. So we've done two right now. One, two, and we'll probably do one like right here. Let's go ahead and do that one. Yeah. <laughs> about 10 to 15 seconds with the propane torch. Okay. Good. And then maybe that one at the bottom. Got to restart it. So if you squeeze it too hard, this Harbor Freight one, it'll go out. So. This hole's kind of small. <clears throat> this may not happen. close. Okay, so we can maybe do one more right there. We've done a few around. We'll let this cool for 10 or 15 minutes, and we'll come back and finish it off. Okay, we'll clean this up, lip up with a wire brush, a wire wheel on a grinder. One of the bottles fell out. That was must have been a big enough hole from the vibration from the reciprocating saw. But if you don't let these cool down or cool them down actively with water, they will shrink. Like that one got pretty small. There's a couple of them that got kind of small because we pulled the bottles up a little sooner than I guess we should have. Most of them stayed okay, but a smaller hole here and there is not that big a deal. Now, one thing we did do is you can see right here how close all the holes are together. But over here, um, there's kind of some space here. And that's because when we were doing our marks here, um, we left some space that... Uh, we had to make up for. So we couldn't fit one here, one down here, one up here, 
because that one was right next to it. So we just split the difference and put two right there. Okay. For the size of these holes, I think that's okay though. How many do we count? Do we count how many we have? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, plus three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. Twelve and eighteen is thirty. Thirty. Why don't we come out with forty? Some people are getting 40 out of these because these bigger bottles. Okay. Did I do that right? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Yeah. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And then we'll be able to put some plants on the top here. Okay, cool. So it's 3 degrees outside. 6 o'clock in the morning. 3 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's 55 in the greenhouse. Okay, I'm going to spare you all the details of putting screws in and threading bolts or nuts onto bolts. But this is basically what it looks like. Um, it looks like half-inch plywood. Um, it was in good shape. I had it in the shed. Leftovers. This is just leftover um, garden. I don't know what you call these posts, but we'd use those to build the chicken coop, and I had a couple left over. So this is 12 inches right here. The bucket we're going to use is 9 inches tall. That'll slide into here. I started to use four of these posts. And then I realized I probably wouldn't be able to get my bucket in. And these are super solid, so I'm not worried about weight here. Uh, a 55-gallon drum, if it has uh, 8 pounds per gallon of water, 55 times 8 is 400-something, right? So 400 pounds um, might be lighter because I don't know if dirt weighs less or moist dirt weighs more. I have no idea, but somewhere around 400 pounds. So I think this will be strong enough to hold this. Um, the floor of this will, is bolted um, from the inside. You can see I just cut the bolts off. They were a little long here. And um, I used a, like a one and a half inch washer on the inside um, for the bolt head. And then for the nut, I just used a little bit smaller washer here on the wood. Crank those down. There's six of them. I cut this out for the drain holes. So I'll, dr I'll drill in drain holes here. This is where the bucket will go. Of course, this will, is where the compost tube will come through. And um, I went ahead and painted the back side of this with some just old garage paint, garage floor paint that I had left over that I'd painted the inside of an old greenhouse with um, just for waterproofness resistance. Of course, this is going to get silicone all around the outside just to protect the wood here. I would have liked to get pressure treated wood, but um, I don't have any and I could go buy some, but I'm just trying to use what I have here. So this will get a layer of silicone all around right here too. And of course that will that edge as well too, just to keep water from dripping down and going into. And this uh, is all soaking wet. It's been sitting out in the snow. So I'm gonna have to let it dry for a few days and then we'll um, paint it um, probably the same time we paint this. And then um, what's next after that is this will all sit on top of this. Like that. That'll give us a platform so that we can stand this up. We can roll it around if we need to and we can um, spin it because in the greenhouse we're going to get sun from kind of I don't know what degrees that's going to be but not all sides so we're going to want to be able to turn it around um, every day or two just so all the plants get not just light but some direct sunlight um, in the hey, fall. What I didn't mention was I had originally screwed this to these this way before I mounted this to here and I just used some outdoor decking screws that are um, rust resistant and um, corrosion resistant. Okay, so same thing here. I just put three screws in each of these from the top. And it's not exact science, but there's three that definitely go into the wood. And that'll give it some good tying strength so that when we do spin it around, it should spin around okay. Let's see how it works. Okay. I forgot to drill the holes in the bottom there. <laughs> but I'll do that. But it seems to spin around okay. So this is gonna be in a greenhouse with directional windows that face the south. If you've been watching any of my other greenhouse build videos, um, you know what that's like. So um, we're gonna to wanna to be able to turn this. So I, I think for right now, once we get our floor put in, which should be later this week, I hope, um, I'm gonna just put a board in there, a piece of plywood, a piece of thick plywood and stand this on it so that we can spin around in a circle. 
it seems to do pretty well. Okay, this is called a plant dolly, and that's what it was sold as. If, and if you Google plant dollies, they come up. This is a 24 inch wide. It actually measures 23 on the inside. It's got a bunch of casters on the bottom that you saw in the a couple minutes ago, and it's rated for 500 pounds according to the website. So we found this locally, this exact one. It was, I think, $44 or $40 something, $44 with tax. So it wasn't expensive. So that bucket will go right in there and it will catch the um, uh, water that drains into it. And of course that water is going to have nutrients in it. So this bucket will, once it's um, drained into there, we'll take it back and we'll pour it back in the top. And those nutrients will go back through the plants um, like a slow aquaponics, right? <laughs> like a very slow aquaponics. Okay, good. Well, good. We learned some things. I'll probably build another one similar to this. Um, it's going to be up off the ground a little bit so the bucket can go under it. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. I'm happy. Good. November 21st. This is exactly seven days after we planted the garden barrel. So seven days ago, um, she planted, she filled this with dirt and put seeds in. And we've been watering it every day by hand, of course. In the top here, she has zucchini. This is all zucchini in the top. In the sides, she's planted kale, spinach, Swiss chard, and lettuce. And you can see that, I don't know, about half of them have little plants in them now. I haven't counted to see how many have plants and how many don't, but let me turn it a little bit here. Okay. So that one has some plants. This one has a bunch. And I don't know what's what yet. She may know, but I don't know um, what's coming up and what's not. And so what we're doing is, obviously the back side is not getting sun, but this front side is getting all day sun. This east side is getting morning sun, of course, and then the west side over there is getting evening sun. So what we're going to do is turn it around. Every day we're going to rotate it um, 90 degrees. So right now the bucket's at the front. Then we're going to rotate it to where the bucket's over here, then the bucket's at the back, and then the bucket's over there. So that um, we can, everything can get some sun at some point. We talked about putting some reflective material in the back there to reflect light onto the back. And then we talked about mirrors and, okay, okay, it's just getting out of control. So, um, and that's all doable stuff, I think. But but for now, we're just going to go ahead and turn it. Um, so November 21st, December 21st is the winter solstice. So that means the sun is going to be, see where the edge of the sun is right here? It's about noon right now. So the edge of the sun is going to be probably a little bit higher up on the wall. So that means in middle of winter, when the winter when the winter sun's at the lowest, um, this is going to be getting full sun. And it is hot right now. I mean, I can put my hand on it, but it's it's kind of uncomfortable to touch. It's not going to burn me, but it's uncomfortable, uncomfortably warm. So, and that's not a dark color. So it's it's is that too much? I don't know. We're going to find out. So this is just a big experiment using this inside this uh, four season greenhouse um, as the sun. Sounds like a chicken's knocking on the door. As the sun is uh, starting to go higher and higher as the spring comes, the sun will go down and down and down and down here. Now, is that going to be, once we stop getting sun contact on this, is that going to be enough ambient light to still grow greens in this? I don't know. This might be something we have to move outside. Or we have to grow some plants in it, change to plants that grow well in the summer uh, without direct sunlight. Okay, so don't know what all the answers are, but that's, that's where we're leaning right now. And... Um, I'm not going to be able to pull that off, but basically that's full of compost uh, material now and some worms and some dirt. So hopefully it's making compost. We are watering it from the top and right now we're just watering these sides just to make sure, just by hand, just to make sure everything's getting nice and moist. Um, you can see that compost tea is coming out the bottom and it's dripping down there. And um, then we're just recycling that. We're just pouring it back in the top. So to make sure there, all those nutrients aren't getting lost. What's going on out here? Oh, yeah. I know why y'all went in here. Okay. Now, as far as the construction of the rain barrel goes, the couple things, modifications I'm going to have to make is for my bucket to fit, a couple of my bolts are sticking down a little bit here, so I'm going to cut those off with the cutoff wheel later. Um, these posts are all-weather posts. They're pressure-treated. I'm not worried about them sitting in water, but I'm going to go ahead and drill 
there's always a little bit of water that gets on these. Of course, it evaporates pretty quickly, but I'm gonna go ahead and just drill a couple holes here and there around the side so it can drain. Um, just so these posts aren't sitting in water. All right, but so far so good. We're talking about making another one and planting maybe some berries in it and seeing how that goes this winter. And uh, whether or not berries will grow in winter in here or not, we don't know, but we're gonna experiment and find out what works and what doesn't. Fun stuff.